Top story, will vote buying work? There's really no question that the student loan bailout is an attempt to add vote buying by the Biden administration just ahead of the midterms. Democrat fingerprints are on stagflation, crime and border chaos. They're much too obvious even for media censors to keep out of voters' minds going into the election. So Dems were desperately looking for distractions. The Mar-a-Lago raid was one. The student loan bailout is another, one they hope will energize a base of 40 million young American voters. But will it work politically or economically? Even some Democrats think it will backfire politically. Listen. So the D Democrats, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a progressive. I want to help folks. But I think this is terrible policy. It, it, politics, uh, we saw. There's a lot of people out there making 30, 40 grand a year that didn't go to college. Uh, and they need help as well, which is why I've been proposing a tax cut for working people that will affect, affect everybody. Well, as for the economics of it all, there aren't many economists who think the biggest vote buy in history, it's up to a trillion of your tax dollars, will help bring down inflation or bring up growth. Here's a tweet by Jason Furman, President Obama's chair of the Council of Economic Advisors, quote, pouring roughly half a trillion dollars of gasoline on the inflationary fire that's already burning is reckless. Doing it while going well beyond one campaign promise, 10K of student loan relief, and breaking another, all proposals paid for, is even worse. So what does happen to the economy now? Joining me now is Kevin Hassett, former chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors under the Trump administration. Kevin, great to see you. Thank you for being here. First of all, Thanks, David. isn't a trillion, I mean, just assuming for a moment that it's a trillion or even a half a trillion, isn't, isn't that supposed to emanate from Congress, not from the White House? Right. And, and that's the most important thing. This is an all out assault on the Constitution. And I'm a little bit disappointed or I say, I guess, extremely disappointed that the media are not covering it this way. But let me just make it 100 percent clear. As you recall, I was one of the people in the White House coordinating the covid economic response in the Trump White House. We asked the Justice Department about debt forgiveness because we were looking at all the tools that we could possibly use, given that we we're about to have a quarter that, that was the biggest negative quarter since the Great Depression. The Justice Department lawyers told us that it was absolutely unconstitutional for us to forgive debt, that we could delay it. And you remember, we did delay uh, some of the debt repayments, yeah. but you couldn't forgive it. Uh, and, and so it was something that, that I really wonder, like, did the Biden White House ask the Biden Justice Department if this is constitutional? Did they say yes? And why is that a different answer than the answer that they gave the Trump administration when they were exploring all the options that they, they could potentially pursue given the pandemic ec uh, economic yeah. crisis? And, and so that's really, for me, question A. I you know, agree. And, 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 you know, I don't know, like, people talk about, like, is anyone going to get standing and will it ever go in front of a court? But this is a blatant assault on the Constitution. And if you're a Democratic lawmaker in Congress and you let a White House spend basically a trillion dollars like they're doing right now, then you've given up your constitutional responsibilities. And, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself. And, and clearly, I think Congress should act. I think you know, Congress should pass a law. Pro, OK, repeal. Well, this. We'll, I really do. we'll see. We'll see what happens. And it, and it will be challenged. There's no question it'll be challenged somehow. I think the White House is prepared for some legal challenge or preparing for it. But clearly, just on the economics, of it. Clearly, if there was ever any deficit reduction in the so-called Inflation Reduction Act, and there was a lot of questions about whether there would be any deficit reduction, this wipes that out entirely, doesn't it? It absolutely does wipe out. I mean, the deficit reduction was illusory. Remember, they hired all those 85,000 uh, people at the IRS that, that are yeah. going to audit all of us within an inch of our lives, <laughs> and, and somehow that's going to increase the revenue a lot. But but the fact is that wasn't, you know, they could hire those guys. They're going to make your life miserable, but most Americans pay their taxes fine, and they're not going to get a lot of revenue out of that. But to put it in perspective, and, and this goes back to some of the comments uh, from your intro, that this is $6,000 per American, the cost of this. And so at some point in the life of every blue collar worker in America, they're going to have to pay $6,000 more in taxes so that they can buy off the loans of doctors and lawyers yeah. and Harvard grads and people who studied critical theory uh, and didn't get a real job. <laughs> 
and the people, the hardworking Americans, are going to have to pay on average six thousand dollars to cover this this policy. And I just do not think that that's just yeah. or defensible in any way. And I'm really proud of Jason Furman. You know, he and I, for, for all of history, are going to be have our pictures on the wall next to each right. other at, at the CEA headquarters at the White House. And 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 you know, he's doing what a CEA chair should, which is speak the truth. And I think that it's too bad that there are not enough Democrats right now in government who are willing to do that. Well, speaking more about the unfairness of, of the thing, uh, it, it goes back. We're familiar with it. I mean, the, the public has had a view of this. And none better, I think, than when Liz Warren uh, was approached by the dad of somebody who'd actually paid off his daughter's debt in, in 2020 at a campaign rally in Iowa. Let me just play that for viewers who've forgotten. Roll tape. <laughs> my daughter's getting out of school. I've saved all my money. She doesn't have any student loan. Am I going to get my money back? Of course not. So you're going to pay for people who didn't save any money, and those of us that did the right thing get screwed. No, it's not even like that. It's great. When we started, of course we did. My buddy had fun, bought a car, went on vacations. I saved my money. He made more than I did, but I worked a double shift, worked extra. My daughter worked, she was 10. So you're laughing. Yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. We did the right thing, and we get screwed. Those of us who did the right thing get screwed. I think that message is, is heard loud and clear by the American public, don't you? Right. I think that actually might be the theme of the Democratic Party, right? Like, so if you do the right thing and you work hard and you make a lot of money, then they want to tax the heck out of you. Uh, if you start a small business, then they want, like, every regulator to give you a, a medical exam uh, three times a day. Uh, and so, so they're taking success in America and penalizing it and rewarding the kind of do-nothing academics that are now the heart and soul of the Democratic Party. And I just can't imagine that, you know, blue-collar America is going to stand for this. This is a, a real watershed moment. Uh, they violated the Constitution. They've sent basically a bill or are going to send a bill of $6,000 to every American so that they can give money to people who studied things that didn't produce good jobs and so therefore couldn't pay back their loans. But Kevin, people you know, who did pay it, back their loans you know, aren't getting any money. We've, see, we've seen this before where it's, it's an attempt to, to fool the public by denying the reality of it. We give you a rate. We gave you a great raise. Well, forget about the fact that that raise was completely wiped out by inflation. I mean, there's all Always, there's always a, a focus on one thing. It's like the magician who says, uh, look here, but he's really doing this stuff with the hand that you can't see. Right. The disinformation right now is through the roof. You know, I saw the White House came out and said that this uh, student loan uh, effort is paid for already by their massive deficit reduction. But the massive deficit reduction they're alluding to is just the removal of all the stimulus programs for the pandemic. And so there's no real deficit reduction yeah, at all. Yeah. And so they're uh, absolutely misrepresenting the economic data and misleading the people every day. And the fact is that, that your show and other shows on Fox, are it's pretty much the only place where journalists are standing up to this. And, and I think it might be, like, as bad as it was in the Trump administration when they were giving them Pinocchios for saying the truth and so on, the fact that the media is allowing them to basically be worse than TASS, right, in, in their press office, and then, you know, parroting the misinformation that the White House is giving is, I think, a low point in the history of American journalism. Well, we, we, we run out of time, but I have to ask a final question, Kevin, because how long, I mean, Americans do understand when they go to the gas pump or, or when they go to the grocery store that they're paying more and that they're getting screwed and they have less ability to pay for things than they used to. And when we go into the winter months and they're not able to afford uh, some of the energy bills, which are going to climb, they've already up 80 percent in natural gas is going to go up further in the winter. Uh, won't they won't Americans be motivated by what they see rather than what they're being told? I think the Democrats hope not, and their strategy to do that is to buy votes, yeah. uh, to uh, perse persecute President Trump, uh, to try to make it all about, like, fake misdeeds that they generate about him uh, rather than what's going on in the world today. And I hope and pray that Americans recognize it, because this unconstitutional effort, this kind of spending is going to destroy the country. i got to go really fast. At the Fed conference just now, they showed that Biden policies added at least 3 percent to the inflation rate. And that's the stuff that's already happened. Yeah. And now, as Jason Furman said, they're pouring gas on the fire. This cannot continue. These people are going to destroy the American economy with these policies. Kevin Hassett, wish you had better news, but maybe you will eventually if Americans do catch on. And I think yeah. they had large have. I, I don't think they're going to fall for this one again. Good to see you, Kevin. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well,